Ever wondered why your meditation session sounds more like a doorbell convention than a serene journey to inner peace? Well my friends, buckle up because today, we will unravel the mystery of the meditation bell. Yes, you heard it right, the humble, often overlooked meditation bell. Now you might be thinking, wait, I'm supposed to find silence and here you are introducing a bell into the equation? Ah, the irony. But trust me, there's method in the madness. Imagine your mind as a mischievous puppy, always ready to scamper off at the slightest distraction. The meditation bell, my dear friends, is like a leash for that puppy. It's a gentle reminder to bring your mind back from its wanderings and focus on the here and now. But wait, there's more. Meditation bells aren't just about keeping your mind in check, they're also about non-attachment. But how, you ask, does a bell help with non-attachment? Well, it's simple, really. When you strike a bell, it rings, right? But then the sound fades away, disappearing into silence. Just like that, the bell teaches us that everything, be it good or bad, is temporary. It comes, it stays for a while, and then, it goes. So why cling to it? And here's the kicker. The bell, despite its importance, is also a lesson in humility. It doesn't demand attention. It doesn't scream, look at me. I'm the most important part of your meditation. No, it simply does its job, ringing out when needed and then fading into the background. So let's face it, if you're not using meditation bells, you might just be doing meditation wrong. Or worse, you might be mistaken for a door-to-door -door salesman. But don't worry, we've all been there. The important thing is that we learn, grow, and maybe just maybe learn to appreciate the ding-dong of a meditation bell. Now that we've established the importance of meditation bells, how about we learn to use one without waking the neighbors? First things first, let's talk about holding the bell. Now I know what you're thinking. It's a bell, not a newborn baby, how hard can it be? Well, you'd be surprised. To maximize the resonance and depth of the bell's sound, hold it gently in your palm. Imagine you're holding a delicate butterfly, too tight and you'll stifle the sound, too loose, and you might just startle that butterfly. And we all know startled butterflies aren't the best for meditation. Next, the striking. This isn't a game of whack-a-mole, folks. You're not trying to smash the bell into oblivion. Instead, think of it as gently waking the bell from its sleep. You want to coax the sound out, not force it. So, with your striker in your other hand, gently tap the bell's exterior. The key here is to strike it with love and respect, like you're tapping a friend's shoulder to show them a funny meme on your phone. Now, when to strike. Well, that's like asking when is the best time to eat chocolate, any time is a good time, but in seriousness, striking the bell at the beginning of your meditation session can help set the tone, quite literally. It's like a starting gunshot at a race but way less jarring and way more zen. Lastly, the listening. This isn't just any old sound you're creating, it's a symphony of tranquility. So don't just hear it, listen to it. Allow the sound to wash over you like a warm wave on a summer's day. As the sound fades, let your mind follow it into the silence. Remember, Meditation bells are not meant to start a neighborhood concert, they're meant to bring you peace, so, ring responsibly. You've mastered the art of ringing, but do you know what you're listening for? Is it the ice cream truck? No, it's the sound of silence. Now I know what you're thinking. Silence? What kind of sorcery is this? I thought we're here for the bells. Well, my friends, the bells are just the beginning. The real magic lies in the silence that follows. The silence after the bell's resonance is a symphony in itself a symphony that can only be heard by those who truly listen. Picture this. You strike the meditation bell. It rings out loud and clear, cutting through the noise of your thoughts. But then, as the sound starts to fade, what are you left with? That's right. Silence. The ringing has ceased, but the resonance continues. It's like a musical note that's been stretched out, elongated into a moment of pure, peaceful quiet. This silence isn't empty though, it's full of potential. It's a blank canvas for your mind, a space for you to focus and gather your thoughts. It's like the calm before the storm, the moment just before the sun peaks over the horizon. It's the pause between breaths, the space between heartbeats. When you truly listen to this silence, you'll find that it's not silent at all. It's filled with the soft hum of your body, the gentle whisper of your thoughts, the distant echo of the bell's ring. It's a symphony of subtleties, a concert of quietness. By focusing on this silence, you can bring your mind into a state of mindfulness. You can clear away the clutter of your thoughts and find a moment of peace amidst the chaos of your day. It's like finding an oasis in the middle of a desert, a sanctuary in the heart of a bustling city. So, the next time you ring your meditation bell, don't just listen to the sound, 
Listen to the silence. Tune into the symphony of quietness and let it guide you to a state of inner peace and mindfulness. The next time someone tells you they can hear the sound of silence, don't call them crazy. They're probably just really good at meditation. So you're a bell ringing, silence listening meditation master now. But did you know there's more to these bells than meets the ear? Let's deep dive into the captivating world of meditation bells, where each bell has a unique voice, and each voice has a distinct purpose. It's like being at a party, where every guest brings their own flavor of fun. Only here the party is in your mind and the guests are these beautiful bells. First up we have the Tibetan singing bowls. These are the life of the party. When struck, they sing a symphony that resonates with the frequency of the universe. They are great for chakra balancing and inducing a deep meditative state. Imagine them as your favorite pop song that gets everyone on the dance floor or in this case into the meditation zone. Then there are the Ting Sha Bells, the icebreakers of our bell party. Their sharp clear tones are perfect for marking the beginning or end of a meditation session. Think of them as the charismatic host who knows just when to get the party started and when to wind things down. Next, let's meet the Japanese Rin Gong. This bell is like the soothing lullaby that calms the chaos. Its deep resonating sound is used in Zen practices to bring about a sense of peace and tranquility. It's the equivalent of the slow dance song that brings a comforting warmth to the room. Lastly, we have the crystal singing bowls. These are the showstoppers. Made from quartz, they produce pure vibrant tones that are ideal for energy healing and relaxation. They're like the unforgettable finale performance that leaves everyone in awe. But remember, it's not about collecting all the different types of bells. It's about finding the one that resonates with you and your meditative needs. It's not about having the most bells, it's about using the right bell. It's like having a different outfit for every occasion but for your mind. So go ahead, find your bell, and let the symphony of mindfulness begin. So, let's do a quick recap before your mind starts ringing like a bell. We've journeyed through the world of meditation bells, diving into their history, their purpose, and their magical ability to summon silence in the midst of chaos. Remember, these aren't your ordinary bells. They're not doorbells or school bells or ice cream truck bells. They're meditation bells, the unsung heroes of mindfulness. You now know that meditation bells are more than just sound producers. They're tools of tranquility, summoning your mind to a state of stillness, drawing your attention inward, and creating a space for you to breathe, reflect, and connect with your inner self. Then, we talked about the art of ringing these bells. It's not about who can ring the loudest or the longest, it's about striking the bell with intention, with respect, and with awareness. The sound of the bell isn't just a noise, it's an invitation to mindfulness, a call to silence, a gentle reminder to breathe and to be present. We also discussed the different types of meditation bells, from the deep resonating tones of the Tibetan singing bowls to the crisp, clear chimes of the Japanese Rin Gong, each bell has its unique voice, its unique vibration, and its unique invitation to mindfulness. And let's not forget what to listen for. It's not just about hearing the bell, it's about truly listening to it, absorbing its sound, feeling its vibration, and letting it guide you into a state of peaceful awareness. It's about letting the bell's sound fade into silence, and in that silence, finding your own inner peace. And there you have it folks. You're now a certified bell ringing, silence listening, mindfulness finding meditation guru. So go out there, ring your bell and find your inner peace. But remember, ring responsibly.